Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of The Daily Stand-Up. My name's Lee Henson, president and founder of Agile Dad. And without any further ado, let's get started. This week, we're focusing our attention on the role of the Scrum Master and different tips and tricks that a Scrum Master can use to help make their life and the life of the teams around them better and so that they can help amplify what they do. One of the things that we cover in all of our Scrum Master classes that I wish I could get across to everyone in the organization is that roughly 70%, that's 70% of what a Scrum Master does is intangible. There's no way to do a report or to run you know, a simple set of numbers of some kind or execute some system-wide query and get information about you know how well your Scrum Master is performing or what exactly they are doing. So I feel like it's important for us to dig a little deeper and try to see what we can do to figure out how we can amplify the cause of the Scrum Master in order to help the organization do better. And I think part of that boils down to how we talk to people who misunderstand concepts that we might consider very easy and how we can express ourselves, whether it's to a team member who doesn't believe in Agile or to a leader who doesn't understand what's going on. I think how we communicate dictates just how good of a scrum master we are. So today I wanted to focus my attention on someone on the team or a leader who doesn't necessarily understand why we should not use time for estimation. So how as a scrum master is it best for you to approach this? Now I did a whole session on the best way to estimate and the best way to forecast and all this good stuff and it was great, but a lot of people say, Lee, this is good if you have people who are drinking the Kool-Aid, but what happens if you get to a team or an organization where people are just really struggling and they don't understand that concept? Well, in a conversation that I had just last week, I had an opportunity to sit down with a friend of mine and she asked me, she says, hey, she says, have you ever read this book? And I said, you know, I haven't. And my next question out of my mouth was one that I realized after I said it was a very immature question. I said, how long does it take to read? You know, how many chapters is it? How big is the book? And what I quickly realized is that was a very good question. But it was one that would be impossible for her to answer. Let me explain. The truth is, she doesn't know how fast I read. And the truth is even deeper. I read at different speeds based on what type of book that I'm reading. If I'm reading a fictional book where the topic and the information isn't going to have any lasting impact on me or the people around me and it's very lightweight, you know, not as deep with a plot, of course, type book, you know, I can read that as fast or slow as I want. But what I find is that I often read those at a much slower pace so that I can, quote unquote, enjoy what I'm reading. The problem is oftentimes I get frustrated because those books take so long to read and that they're not adding any value to me long term that I can then share with others. Now, don't get me wrong. I enjoy putting myself in situations where I can get away from time to time. It just doesn't lend to me. The same value as reading a nice non-fiction book where I can take away something that I can either apply in my own personal life or help uplift someone else with. But at the same time, if I'm reading one of those type of books, I do take and pay more attention to detail, but I try to only read through once, which means that I can usually get through those type of books much more quickly, but less frequently. You know, because it's not something that I focus all my attention on and say, oh, I really enjoy reading these nonfiction books. So for me, it's a double-edged sword. I don't know exactly how long it would take me. And just because if even if I timed it and it took me one hour and 10 minutes, it doesn't mean that it's going to take my, my youngest daughter one hour and 10 minutes. My youngest daughter is a bookworm and she loves to read. So if I gave her that same book if she was interested and I said, Hey, read this. She could probably devour the book in, you know, half the time or a third of the time because she's ravenous when it comes to reading, loves to read. But then when it comes to retention, after I read the book, I may retain a whole lot more information than she would, but she would have a much more enjoyable time. So the question is, where do we stand when it comes to that question? If a leader or an executive reads a book, and you know I've covered this in class before, 
How deep do they go? How far do they read? How long does it take them to read the book is a great question. Because then you can challenge them and say, well, do you think it would take this person the same amount of time or this person the same amount of time? And do you think they would get as much out of it? And I think that when you start asking those questions, here's the tie-in, that's the same as asking someone, how long is it going to take you to execute this activity or do this work? So the second you start asking people, how long will it take you to do X, that's the same as asking them, how long will it take you to read a book? That there really is no right answer, because the truth is, we don't know. And that as we start to read the book and go chapter by chapter, if we knock out a chapter and then I ask that person, okay, based on how far you are now, how far do you, how long do you think it'll take to read the book? They could take that one chapter that they completed, figure out how long it took to read that chapter, multiply it times the number of chapters in the book, and come up with an, uh, you know, a pretty good estimate, a, a safe estimate. But what I can tell you is that estimate's still not perfect because, well, chapters vary in size. Chapters vary in content. Sometimes the topic is more deep. Sometimes it's more lightweight. And I think that if you use this question that there's obviously no right answer to, and, and just instead of asking it to an individual, try to explain what it would be like to ask this question to a whole team or to a whole organization holistically. Okay, everyone, how long does it take to read this book? Asking that question in such a manner would be the same as asking a team, how long will it take to do this backlog item or this story? No one really knows. No one wants to answer. We can base it on the best reader's performance, but it's still not going to give you the best optimum answer, and it's not going to put you in a place where you want to be. It's not going to get you to that point where you're like, oh, this makes sense. It's going to pull you to a place where you're going to quickly become upset because no one can quantify exactly how long it takes for you to read a book and why is someone estimating on your behalf anyway. And you're going to quickly realize that this question really does beg and encourage you to think a little deeper and to look at things a little more hist a little more agnostically, right? And one of the things that you can do is oftentimes instead of saying, how long will it take to read a book? I don't ask that question to friends. If my friends say, oh, I have this book and you really enjoy reading it. I'll ask, that's cool. How many pages is it? How large is the book? Was it a deep read? You know, I'll ask those kind of questions. And it's amazing because when you ask those kind of questions, it makes it a whole lot easier for you to get your head around whether or not that subject matter is something that you like to read about. And based on the size of the book, you could probably get a good idea of, based on history of other books that you read of that kind or type, how long it would take you to complete a work that's similar. And I feel like that is more along the lines of a relative complexity estimate. And that might be the easiest way that I've ever found to explain this concept, whether it's to an executive, to a manager, to a team member. I'm not asking you specifically how long does it take to read the book because everyone's going to take a different amount of time based on their interest in reading, based on their mental aptitude of how fast they read and what they can digest, based on the topic or subject of the book and whether it's interesting. There are too many nuances that make it impossible for someone to answer that question. Where if I asked, is the book a deep read? Is it a topic that I'm interested in? And how many pages is the book? based on the size and the topic and the level of interest, I should be able to give a relative complexity estimation. This is something that's going to help us estimate things better later, and it's going to help you be a better scrum master because it's going to give you the ability to explain that one topic that everyone struggles, struggles to explain, and it's why time-based estimation doesn't work and relative complexity does. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Daily Stand-Up Podcast. Do tune in for additional episodes. We're still looking for a few more. We encourage you to submit topics or episode topics for the podcast to learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear your ideas as we want to plan next week and schedule some of those out so that we can answer your topics next week. On behalf of the team at Agile Dad, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile. Do take care, my friends.